welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith With. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here for checking out the uh, the series. You know what to do if you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week, new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover those new ones. You can grab us any of the usual places in podcast land. That includes Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe at NPR, WFPK.org, Consequence, or YouTube right here for the uh, video versions. Anywhere you get your podcast from, you can subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. And that's me, Kyle Meredith, today talking with actors Nathan Stewart Jarrett and George McKay about the new Phil Femme. This is a very powerful, very heavy, and very beautifully shot and masterfully acted movie. Uh, I'll, re I'll read the uh, synopsis here with his performance as Aphrodite Banks. Jules, played by Nathan Stewart Jarrett, uh, has a place among London's celebrated drag artists. One night after his show, he steps out to get some cigarettes and is brutally attacked by a man, played by George McKay, uh, out with a gang of his friends. And although Jules is able to recover physically, he withdraws from the outside world traumatized. Uh, months later, he recognizes his attacker by chance in a gay sauna. And without makeup and wrapped only in a towel, Jules is able to approach the other man inc incognito and find out who he is. He begins an affair with the closeted Preston with a plan to take his revenge. Uh, this is a revenge erotic thriller but it is so much more than all of that. And I'm so excited to talk with uh, Nathan Stewart, Jarrett and George McKay about why did they want to tell this story? What it was like shooting these scenes, these attack scenes, these love scenes. I want to hear what it was like uh, embodying these characters who there's a duality to both of them at all times from uh, one being closeted and, and letting someone else in to the other one being attacked, but being outgoing in this quest uh, all that and more, and and just to hear about the shoots. Uh, so let's jump into it. Let's talk femme. It's Kyle Meredith with Nathan Stewart Jarrett and George McKay. Good to see you too. Yeah, nice to meet uh, George. Nice to meet you, Nathan. Last time you and I were talking, we were talking about you rolling around in a dumpster in a uh, in yes. Culver, So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I will say when we were having that conversation, I'm jumping right into here. Uh, when we were having that conversation, and I said I'm really looking forward to seeing femme. I don't think I understood the weight that you must have been carrying waiting for this movie to come out. Uh, let me compliment the both of you. I, it is a dark movie. It is a beautiful movie at the same time. And both of you all deserve every award that is out there. So uh, I absolutely love the performances. Thank you, oh, so, thank you so, so much. much. That's really, really kind. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know who wants to start with this. And, and, and I'll start with the easy thing. Why did you all want to tell this story? Uh, because because it is it's it's a very very heavy piece the, the why the the why the why is for sam and ping the initial why is for sam and ping um the why for me is is the script the, that the heaviness of the piece is is one thing but the script is is really beautiful um it's it's nuanced and it is tragic and i i yeah it was just so so powerful i, I thought that it was it was classical and economic and i just thought that i was like i need to be part of this um the heaviness was like another thing but i, I really i was like it just i need to be part of this i need to tell be part of the story that's being told and then you know you think about things politically and you think about things in terms of uh, they talk about subverting the genre and of course you want to be at the forefront of, of posing those questions but i just thought these characters um and the way they they're entwined is just is kind of amazing yeah George, you know, I'll throw this one to you too. I mean, you know, so much of good, great acting to me, you know, is about uncovering an identity to find some sort of truth. Uh, you know, for you to come into this, to embody a character like this, I mean, it's impressive. It feels like art. How, how did, you know, what what was it for you and how did you approach it? Oh, well, thank you very much, firstly. That was, I mean... Similar to Nathan, it's the script. The script is so beautiful, so tight. It is, it is the film. And therefore, you know, the the kind of broader reverberations of this story and the questions it, it hopefully will kind of uh, prompt, like the, the broader reverberations aside, as an actor, 
like these parts and for me Preston is just absolute gold you know to have a character that is so there's written with such nuance and such clarity um and to have such a kind of like deep contradiction at their center and then to have the way in which they cover that up and have that revealed sort of be a, a massive character in itself was just a dream like and I think a lot of the performances that I've grown up loving are big performances. I think of like John Leguizamo as Tybalt or um, Stephen Graham as Combo in This Is England. They're like big Daniel, you know, Daniel Day-Lewis, Daniel Plainview, like kind of scene chewing <laughs> kind of performances. <laughs> or I mean, there's, there's an operatic level to so many of the performances I've been inspired by. And there is something kind of operatic about Preston's performance of himself that then you're then kind of, but it's built on such a nuance given the, um, you know, the amazing writing that Sam and Ping have given us. It was just an absolute, you know, it, it was, it was a, it was, it was a golden, it was a golden role, despite being, you know, a rather complex and, and difficult man. Yeah. I, uh, I did go into it, not exactly reading the whole log line or synopsis or anything. And That's right. <laughs> it was, I feel like it was really the best way to, to kind of. Yeah, man. Yeah, totally. Totally. To get surprised and to not know, or to not, not be watching it. I, you know, I think that would be the best, the best thing. Yeah, Nathan, for you, I mean, and, and coming off of culprits, you know, which had its own thing. Did you, um, what was it like transitioning from one to the other? I mean, uh, it, it, do you have to stay in a state of mind for something like this? Um, yeah, it was, it was a huge adjustment. I think in terms of, uh, um, emotionally, mentally, there was, a, there was something very, very different in a sense of that culprits, I had to feel very, very capable, um, all the time, even though things were kind of slipping through, through Joe's fingers. And actually for a, a bit of the beginning of the movie, um, for them, Jules feels completely powerless. And so I, I, the starting point was was very, very, very different in a, in a sense. Physically, <laughs> physically, I, was, I don't know. I just that was that was really that was really um kind of a journey of just being kind of as big as I've ever been. Um, and maybe ever will be. Who knows? It was just a tank, um, just eating all all the eggs and all all the meat and chicken, um, and and having to kind of slim down to to um to be jewels and and to not in a weird way be kind of frail by any means but just be be a little more center and actually just be smaller than george or attempting to be smaller than george um but the adjustment the emotional adjustment was, was quite big weirdly though both characters are extremely internal <laughs> um jules does a lot of watching i i, I watched george so much um to the point of which we were just discussing that i I can't really remember the film as an actor. It's like, so I can't, it's like I remember as an actor. I'm like, well, you did this and you did that. And then that person was in the scene. I can only remember George in scenes and like maybe the surroundings, but I can never really remember what I was doing. So I almost encountered it as, as if it were me. Um, so that was, that was weird, but I was just watching George. because They're both really, really internal people, both very, very secretive. So in that sense, I was just like a continuation of just not talking that much. Um, but yeah, very, 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 very internal. Um, but one, one actually not, but neither of that powerful, but one really not being as powerful as the other. Yeah, it's uh, it's noticeable how much acting both of you do, do with your eyes uh, in this, because it, I think that's the game of chess during the moments where those are happening. I mean, it really is. It's all happening right there as you, you know, like it's, I, I don't even know how you can talk about doing that because I mean, people talk about the art of acting and, and what you have to think and, uh, but when it comes to just looks, I mean. The people, I mean, the, the greats, they always say act like the best acting is, is listening and it's not a lie. Like, and sometimes you're not just listening to what someone else is saying. Like I had this thing um, and, and you know, George had like all these rings and like tattoos on his hands. I had a thing about George's hands. And it was actually the very first day of filming that kind of came to me, you know, we're doing the date scene and, and George just sitting there, you know, chatting away and, and you know, like over steak and blah, blah. And it's all this stuff, all this gesticulation and, and like playing the big man in this restaurant. And I was just like looking at his hands just flying at me. And I was like, well, that's, those are the hands that hurt you. 
like that that's those are the things that committed the crime um and destroyed destroyed George's life and so throughout the film and luckily this is the first day throughout the filming I just really watched George I was always aware of where George's hands were because I was like well at any second these hands could come back and and hit you and it's in a weird way, it was like, it was a gift. I was like, well, that's like a, a form of listening. So even though he was talking, I was just like, just focus on his hands. And if my eyes flick down unconsciously, then that would be fine. And so I think you sometimes you find those things um, and it might be an accident of, I don't know, you were doing some, you were talking at one point, you were talking and you were like waving your knife around or something. And I was like, Jesus, <laughs> it's like, God. And so you just get these, these, these gifts and you kind of, you listen and hope that, pray that the camera and the audience are picking up what you're thinking. What's it, because, uh, I mean, also, because I think you're talking about this a little bit, the duality that both of these guys kind of have to carry the whole time. And and George, I'll throw this one to you too, because because there is, there is this, like uh, on top of everything, I mean, you are representing a very different queer story than I'm used to seeing. A very violent queer story, you know, with this mm. oppression and regression that seems to be built up inside. Like, where did you have to go to find this guy? I, that was funny. It's interesting. I guess there was a, we the initial attack that happens. Um, you know, that that is the sort of spark of this this relationship. Um, I remember we filmed it. And there was that day, and then there was there was a day that Sam and Ping said we need some extra stuff of Preston in the edit, and we picked up a shot almost from Jules's point of view, and they the direction I got on the day was basically just say everything to yourself, say either hype yourself up, telling yourself what you are, or get angry at yourself, and so all of that stuff. Like, I'm the big man. Who's the big man? Who's the big man? Who's the big man? It's all self hatred as well that's been directed at you know at, at Jules but it's it's him you know he he hates himself because of this kind of blocky way that he sees it he's sort of been programmed to not to accept or for for who you know for the aspect of his identity that is his sexuality does not chime with the other parts that he is sort of like feels fundamentally rooted in or safe in or is his environment um and it's also like legitimately part of him, that sort of like tough mas masculinity. We've spoken about that, that he is, I think it's sort of Preston has a sort of a lack of nuance in the way that he sort of thinks he sees things quite, <laughs> which is actually ironically, I, and this is maybe a bit broad brushstrokes, but quite a masculine thing to see things quite black and white. Like, you know, it's quite it's clear. It's either this or it's that, you know, and, uh, and that, that sort of he in himself, has got two opposing things which he kind of can't compute that those things can't exist together you know because that's not my understanding of what either of those two things are because a mixture of just who he is or what he's been told or the, what the world has decided to say um and and that she's just at war with himself so it was kind of just like just rooting at that basically and and i mean you just you just do it you you know you i understand i understand sort of understood that um and so we just kind of do that uh and almost, uh, I guess what you're saying about the eyes and also about how to find that, that's something that Sam and Ping were so brilliant as a directing duo, is that often if you'd speak to them together, and it wouldn't always be the same way round, but one would give you a very practical note in terms of what the story needed or what the shot needed in terms of like, this is what the audience need to read in that moment. And it was like a kind of, out of the scene practical thing like can you give us that and then the other one would give you a note that would be much more sort of metaphorical or poetic in how to get to that note and so like an example of that is the dinner scene that Nathan talked about it was like the moment where I sort of Jules says do you have a girlfriend I'm like oh oh you just want to be taken out by a bit of rough this is the type of person that you want me to be and that kind of moment where actually Preston was having a lovely time up to that point and uh and 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 Sam told me and it was actually in the audition but again when we did it he was like this is the point in the story where Preston fundamentally misses Jules and we need to see that change and him decide to be what he thinks Jules want him to be and then Ping came along and was like if this was a rom-com you've got a ring in your back pocket you're about to propose and he's just broken up with you <laughs> and I was like 
<laughs> and it was just like, it was great. Cause I was like, okay, this is A to B what I have to do. And this is the car I have to drive in. Great. You know, and then it's, it's really clear, you know? So well. I know you were like, you were like kind of getting these beautiful, like opposing notes. And I was busy trying to like play them off against each other. And I was like, <laughs> this is how I want. who's going to give me the answer that I want? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, I will say, um, I mean, the attack scene was harrowing and scary for the viewer and beautifully shot at the same time. And the bathtub scene and the way the candles are, and it looked like a painting. And there are so many moments. Um, and I'll just close up by asking this too. When those cameras went off, how what was that like i mean are you guys able to kind of lift do you inject humor to get through it i mean you know what what are those moments like when the camera when they say cut i mean first of all just the the, the bathroom scene, james rose dop is a genius and i i i would love to just kind of take him everywhere i go as an actor and <laughs> just he's just amazing um i don't know it's weird because weirdly and I think we both said this, it, it's a really confronting film, but I personally had a great time shooting it. <laughs> um, and I felt very safe and, and yeah, just really supported. And when the cameras went off, of course, there's sometimes a little bit of residue, but it really, I didn't feel battered and alone, even though I was being battered and it was quite alone whilst filming you know, in the scenes. Um, and I do remember, I, I knew that I was gonna be a little heartbroken um, because Jules is heartbroken. And so I took a little moment at the end, well, it was quite a long moment, at the very end of shooting to kind of repair. But it really, I don't know, it was, it was kind of a lovely shoot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. it's a beautiful movie. And I say that with the understanding of what this movie is and, and does. And that ending, man, uh, seriously, I, I hope you really all do win all the awards. I really do mean that. Um, and it's been such a pleasure to watch it. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you both about it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cheers. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.